never going back. Just stay right there for a few. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Glory to God. Say amen when you have it. The word of the Lord reads to us. Now Peter and John went up. Somebody say they went up together into the temple at the, at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour and a certain lame, man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple who Verse 3, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, axed an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold, have I none, but such as I have given I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Verse 7 says, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Verse 8 says, and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple. Y'all hear Pastor Flora praising him because that's a testimony for her. <laughs> the word of God is alive. With them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. And verse 9 says, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew it was he which sat at the gate. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Father, we thank you today for your word. We thank you, Father, that you'll speak through it. Father, decrease me and increase your spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And the church says, amen. Amen. Amen again. You may have your seats. Javon, just reach in my bag and just grab my towel, please. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, extend your reach. Tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, you didn't hear what I said. Come on, say, neighbor, you didn't hear what I said. <laughs> extend your reach. Extend your reach. Thank you, Javon. The Bible says that it's a certain man at this gate called beautiful. It's a beautiful sight. And okay, I ran out of time. Sorry. Oh, he's at a gate called beautiful. And the Bible doesn't describe his name. It only describes his condition. The Bible only says what is wrong with him and how long it's been wrong with him. I'm very appalled at the body of Christ um, sometimes in mention and reference to this because most people are ready to tag your problem, tag your pain, your grief, your issues, your problems to you and never have known your name. They don't know who you are. They don't know, they don't know where you come from. They just heard what your problem was. The Bible says they carried him. Now, I asked God who they were, and I didn't receive an answer, and so I didn't worry about it. <laughs> I didn't worry about it. All I knew is that it was a they. And they took him, they carried him to a gate called Beautiful. Now, I, I have a problem because I want to understand why they would take a man with an ailment or condition of his body to a beautiful place. Why would you set something in front of something else that looks good, you set something that doesn't look good. Somebody that's begging, somebody that's asking, somebody that is wanting so much of, and then you set them in front of somewhere where it looks prosperous, where it looks wealthy. 
Now, normally in our day today, of course, we have there are homeless people. There are people that are without and they ask, they want, they need. And it's whatever direction their life has gone, whatever situation they have dealt with. They ha they're sitting in front of places that we go to and that we shop in. And I, <laughs> I wouldn't say that most of the places that we go and that we shop in are beautiful. But what I will say, what I will say is that you have people in front of these stores asking other people, those that have, for something that can help them or assist them. I was wondering why the people that carried him didn't also give something to him so that he would stop begging. But I realized that everybody's paying has purpose to it. And with that purpose comes time. There is an appointed time that God will answer your prayers, will answer you after crying out, after shouting out. There are times that God, he will allow you to get to your worst moment before he helps you. And it's not because he does not care. It's because of the fact that he wants to grab your attention. Your miracle has a set time on it. Somebody says my miracle has a set time on it. Mm -hmm. Everything that you desire, everything that you need, every miracle that is set up for you, anything that God has for you, there is time associated to it. So after a while, you're praying and you're praying. And most of us, we get frustrated because while we're praying, we get frustrated because we don't see the manifestation of our prayer. But it doesn't mean that God has not heard you. It just means that God is working things out. See, now, I, wanna, I want you all to understand that God is, yes, he is omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. However, if you nag him, <laughs> you don't give him time to work on your situation. And while you keep on praying, that means that you have a shortage in your faith. There is a loss in your faith. Why is it that you must have to go to God a hundred times over and pray consistently about the same thing over and over and over again and think that he didn't hear you? No, he heard you. And I'm reminded of a story um, in Daniel. He prayed and God said, I heard you the first time. But what God was doing behind the scenes was trying to help Daniel get out of his situation. It was a manifestation. He closed the mouth of what would consume him. Mm, you're not saying nothing. I'm afraid. Um, he closed the mouth of lions. He was in a lion den, meaning that he was in a place of death. That means immediately he could have died. But God didn't allow for the, the lion's mouth to open and consume him because there was still purpose in him. There is purpose in all of us, and it's connected to a time. Everything that we stand in need of, God will release it in due time. Somebody just tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, it shall come to pass. And so you have a man, nameless, with a condition, carried to a gate. And while he's there, there are two great men of God that come before him, Peter and John. And their attempt was to just go into the gate, just go ahead and go pray. It was their hour of prayer. And normally when we pray and we take prayer watches, it's normally 3, 6, 9, 12. And so it's the same custom here. And they were going into this temple but while going, they were being asked and begged of, can I have? And I'm not going to be long, I promise you all. John and Peter say, look on us. Now, it's interesting because Peter and John are not saying look on us because they have less than. But what they do have in their hand is something that he would need for the rest of his life, not just for a moment. See, I want to tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm hearing this. Don't sell yourself short. This, this man with an ailment was selling himself short. The Bible says, let's, let's, the Bible says that um, this man was looking at him. Peter and John said, look on us. And verse 5 says, and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. He looked at them to receive something that would only sustain him for a moment. 
But he didn't realize that what Peter and John really had to give would sustain him for the rest of his life. And so I told you to tell your neighbor, don't sell yourself short. Because some of us come to a point in time where we're selling ourselves short of a miracle. We want God to do something, but it'll only sustain us for a moment. And God does not operate that way. If he's going to give something to us, it's going to sustain us for the rest of our life. Somebody just say, I want to be sustained for the rest of my life. Mm. He's looking for something that would only get him a few things or only something that he can carry in what they would call a purse or a little sack. He wanted some coins. He wanted something that eventually would run out. Oh, God, Lord Jesus. He wanted something from Peter and John that eventually would go and leave. Money today, money today, it's a consumable. It may not be food, but when you go to McDonald's, you go to Burger King, you pay your money, and your money is gone. It's gone. I told, and I told, I told God something. I, I said, I said, you know, you're, 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 you're great, but you're also very funny. <laughs> I, why, why would you allow, you know, because our mindset is, oh, we'll, we'll get that money back. You know, I get paid on Friday. I get paid in two weeks. I'm going to get that money, get that money right back. It's okay. I, I just, I need to go eat. I need to get something in my stomach. I need to, and we're losing we're losing what we're supposed to save. And, and sometimes we shouldn't really even been eating it in the first place. Talk to me, Joshua. And I, I will put myself on a front street to say that, yes, I don't always eat healthy. And I don't mind spending a dollar at McDonald's or Burger King to go get me something to eat. Uh, the other day I had White Castle. Lord God, y'all, y'all pray for the prophet, all right? <laughs> God, God allowed me to get some White Castle. <laughs> oh, God. And then I left it out. I'm going to just take a segue. I left it out in my room, and OJ came up the steps. And next, when I came in my room last night, I saw that the food was all over the place. He had, he had got into he got into the bag. So OJ also had White Castle. Y'all praise God for OJ. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. <laughs> uh. But some of us, we need home-cooked meals. Some of us, we need things that's going to last us a while. But sometimes what we do is we ask God only for what can help us for a moment. We only want, we want fast food. We want things that are past, things that come quick. But we are not willing to wait on what God wants to give us and to also sustain us. You are not supposed to be selling yourself short. Don't deceive yourself. You are right where you're supposed to be and in line with God so that you can receive what you need for a lifetime. Somebody say a lifetime. Uh, don't look to sustain yourself just for a moment. It's not just for, it's not how God operates. Tap your neighbor and say neighbor. That's not how God operates. If he's going to give you something, then it's going to be for the rest of your days. And I want to prophetically you lift your hands right in a moment, just real quick. And I prophetically decree and declare that over your life shall you receive the blessings of God that will sustain you for the rest of your life. I pray and I decree and declare that you receive something from God that will never that will never run out. I said that it's going to be there forever. Yes, God says that it is for you. you for for you, for you, it is yours for the asking. God says that this time, this time when you go down in prayer and you ask him for something, it's going to be su to sustain you for the rest of your life. Somebody just tap yourself and say, self, I'm going to be sustained for the rest of my days. Hallelujah. <laughs> You're not Shabbai. Whatever you need from the Lord. I don't care if it's healing, if it's money, if, it, if whatever you need from him, he will give it to you and he'll cause it 
Mashaya, the Kosa beyond the Ashamaya, Hallelujah, and my cup it'll run over. That Mandia Sikali Bioshabai. Yes, that means, in other words, that what I have, what I'll have in my hand, it'll continuously run over. I won't have to want for anything. And while it's running over, I'm gonna give some to my neighbor, I'm gonna give some to my family, I'm gonna bless those that are around me because I'm not selfish about my salvation. What God does for me, He'll also also do for another just as he did for me last night as he saved my life he also saved others all right you i'm afraid because you're all not saying amen uh, <laughs> i gotta go i'm running out of time peter says silver and gold have i not but such as i have i give thee I don't have a gold coin, a silver coin for you. I don't have just money for you. Though I may possess some things that you want, that is not the reason as to why we are having this interaction. Peter and John are not having an interaction with this man because of the fact that they have something to give him for a moment. But rather, they have something in their hand that they would that would give him sustaining power for the rest of his life. Somebody say for the rest of my life. Um, the Bible says, after he says, um, uh, uh, "Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee." In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. I just dare just about five people in the room just stand up and just begin to walk. Just begin to take a few steps. Just begin to do something. Reason is because, reason why I'm telling you to walk is because some of you are asking God for something that is just for a, just for a little bit. But you see how... I, I didn't even tell you how many steps to take. Some of you are taking more steps than you desire to take. It's prophetic right now. Y'all are walking around the room. Y'all <laughs> are taking, see, some of y'all are, hung, are hungry for it, and I love it. God says that I am a rewarder of those that diligently seek me. And if you will receive it, God said that I have more for you. If you, everything that you stand in need of, I have for you. Rise up in your faith and walk. I can imagine the face of this man that was standing or sitting at this gate. What do you mean, Peter, walk? What do you mean, John, rise up? What do you mean? What are you talking about? He says, rise up. Walk. Mm. Some of you need rising. A rising in your faith. Some of you need a rising in your relationship with the Father. Some of you need a rising in the Spirit of God that lives in you. I just want you to touch yourself and say, Lord, increase your spirit in me. Come on, say it again. Lord, increase your spirit in me. Mm, you may be seated. I'm almost finished. This is the part that I want to get to. This is the part I want to get to. Verse 7 says, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, somebody shout immediately. immediately. His feet and ankle bones received strength. Yes. I told God, y'all might laugh. I, don't know. I told God, whoop de doo Reason why is because. I already know that the power that Peter and John had was all ready to do signs, miracles, and wonders. We're in Acts chapter 3. That means the day of Pentecost has happened. People have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Spirit and they have already done signs, miracles, and wonders. I didn't say whoop de doo to God to be disrespectful, but I said, Lord God, you want this man to get up. You use them. You use the power that was invested in them to raise this man up. He got up and he stood. 
And then he started walking. And then he started leaping. And he started running. And he do all these things. And I said, God, what do you what do you want? It, it was highlighted to me in this word. And I said, Lord, what do you what are you trying to say to me? What is it that you're trying to convey? And he said, extend your reach. I want you to tap your neighbor again and say, neighbor, extend your reach. And I said, okay, God, all right, cool. I'll put it as a title if you want me to. That's fine. No problem. And he said, yes, extend your reach. The reason as to why he wants us to extend our reach is because there are some people that are around us. It may be some people that we have come in contact with. There may be some people that are without even family members that have less than or don't have enough. And God is trying to tell us to extend our reach, extend our hand to those those that may not have what they need to make it through life. If you make a decision in your mind to say, God, I'll do it. That's when you receive the favor of the Lord. God will give you favor amongst men because you decided to say, okay, I'm going to do what normally I wouldn't do. But because I'm here on an assignment, see, Peter and John did not just go there just to pray. It was a divine moment. It was a divine assignment that they were on. You're not saying amen. And I don't understand. <laughs> that I'm trying to get you to understand that if you extend your reach to someone that may not have it, that may I'm not trying to tell you that you need to put $1,000 in the pocket of a homeless person. But what I'm saying to you is, is there's somebody that's without faith. There's somebody without salvation. There's somebody that does not have it all in their, in their hand to receive Christ. If you take time to extend your reach, you never know what's going to happen. Let me give you revelation. The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says that. He, they lifted him up, took him by his right hand, and lifted him. Not only did they extend their reach, but they had enough strength in them to pick him up. Jesus. He, it, 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 says that, it says that they picked him up. But it doesn't only just say that, but immediately, by way of a reach, he was healed in his body. His legs began to get strength. It says that immediately his feet and ankle bones receive strength. Mm, I'm hearing, Mom. And the ankle bones, they mean it's, it's, it's faithfulness. God did not just want to restore a man of healing, but rather when he realized that he received a miracle, that he would be faithful. Oh, he will be faithful in that what he which he received. So any bit of the money that he got, any bit of anything that he re received that was materialistic, he will be faithful in giving it unto God. What he once was asking for, he was now able to have more than enough to give. Yeah. All right, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. It's more than enough. It's somebody else. Come on, somebody just say that I have more than enough. Come on, come on and tap your neighbor and say, Neighbor, I have more than enough. I have more than enough to sustain me. There's nothing that's going to stop me from being able to be sustained. I have more than enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. He gave a man more than enough, Aunt Londa. How you doing? Love you, Auntie. He gave, he gave this man more than enough. It wasn't just to restore his body. I want to say it again. But it was to help restore his faith. It was his faith. He would never, ever look at people the same way ever again. Oh, my God. And those that carried him. Okay, wait, give me a second. <laughs> give me a second. Those that carried him to this gate, he was able to walk past now. He was able, he was able to now walk past them. The Bible said, I'm skipping ahead, but I'm going to go ahead. The Bible says that when he started leaping and jumping and dancing and running, the people saw him and knew that it was him. 
Hallelujah. Yes, I'm not a product of my problem any longer, but God has blessed me so much so uh, that though you carried me to the gate, I'm able to now walk past you. I'm able to use my own two feet uh, and what you had strength for when you carried me. Uh, now that I have strength on my own, uh, I can look at you and say, God did it for me and he will do it for you. Whatever your need is, he'll do it for you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Got to go. Yeah. Got to go. Okay, I skipped ahead of myself. Let me back up a little bit. Okay, verse 7. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Verse 8, say it again, I like it. He received strength. Yeah, I like it. All right, verse 8 says, And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising. <laughs> I need to say this. <laughs> when you go to extend your reach, don't immediately expect for people to just receive what you're trying to give them right away. Because they want what they want. They want what they already have it in their mind, what they need, what they want. And so what happens is when you extend your reach, they got to try it out a little bit. They got to try the money that you give them. They got to try the things that you get. They got this man. It says it says he stood first. <laughs> it says that he stood. They lifted him up. His ankle bones received strength and he he leaping up stood. OK. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to say to you all when you are in a position to extend or extend your reach of salvation to a person. Sometimes what happens is they got to try it out for a little bit. Hallelujah. Some of us are expecting right now, but today this world, the wickedness in this world, there are some of those that are not able to just fully go ahead and just convert because they understand that there are some things in the church that are not good for them. Okay, I'm just going to be real for a moment. Not every church is a good church. God's church is a good church. But the people in it contaminate it sometimes. And you can't expect to reach people and bring them in here for salvation. And the people that are in the church are contaminated. They're preaching a false doctrine. They're, they're, pre they're prophesying falsely. This day and age, it's not as easy as it used to be. But the Lord says that as the devil would change his mechanism and his system of trying to deceive those that wouldn't receive Christ, he said that we also, the body of Christ, need to change our strategy in how we win souls. You can't fight the enemy the same way all the time. There's no devil and demon that gets cast out the same way, the same of the same time all the time. It's not the same thing all the time. It's not. Some spirits come out by violence. Some spirits come out by spitting. Some they exhale. They they it comes out their nose. It, whatever, however it comes out, it comes out. I'm not gonna look at you, mommy. <laughs> Sometimes it just comes out. You can't expect for every spirit to come out the same way. That means that we have to have a different strategy ourselves. Mm, deo shabaya. Some of you, some of you. Are, go and try to win souls and don't have no faith. Without faith, it's what? Impossible to please God. So don't go into shop, right? And try to win five souls and you don't have no faith. Hallelujah. You don't have no faith for their miracle. You don't have no faith that you don't see them going any further than what they are right now. You're just concerned. I'm going to talk, not to y'all, to a pastor out there that decided that he wanted to go to ShopRite and win five souls, and you only cared about the tithes and the offering. You only cared about a body being in the church and decided, oh, I'm going to grab them because I see something in them, but I really want their money. This church 
Asbury Park Deliverance Evangelistic Center is not about cosmetics. We don't need antics to win souls. We got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm not ashamed to say that I love this church because I know in this church uh, we can win souls for Christ. And if y'all don't believe it out there on the airways, check our track record. Glory to God. There's a man by the name of Apostle Arturo Skinner that did signs, miracles, and wonders. There's a man by the name of Apostle Herbert Sneed that cast out devils and preached the undulterated word of God. There's a man by the name of Pastor Alfonso Rice that sang hymns and praises unto God. And it caused demons to manifest in the middle of the service. I have a track record. And if you want to know where I come from, I come from the lineage of deliverance. And there's nothing you can do about it. And this church is standing on a side solid foundation we stand on the foundation of prayer and principle of an apostolic doctrine and a prophetic word in our mouth hallelujah thank you jesus and this house shall be called a house of prayer for all people hallelujah just tap your neighbor and say neighbor extend your reach extend it extend it extend it next time you encounter somebody that's going through somebody that's going through the storm somebody that's encountering a love loss somebody that don't have it in their pockets just extend your reach a little bit and tell them about God tell them about Christ come on they'll feel the power from the sanctuary in your hand and they'll be able to stand up they'll try out their salvation a little bit and run with the word of God because you gave it to them it's in their spirit now and once God knows you once he remembers you he'll never forget you I'm finished somebody just scream it again extend your reach Lord God verse 9 verse 9 says and all the people saw him walking and praising God and they knew it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Javon, you can start playing softly. <laughs> I went on a tangent because you got to understand the story of Peter and also understand who John is. Peter was a cusser. Peter was a hothead. He was a person that really didn't want to hear nobody. He was a fighter. He didn't have any regard for nobody. But when Jesus, when he encountered Jesus in his occupation or in his level of being a merchant, being a person that would go and fish, when he encountered Jesus, Jesus gave him something different rather than what he was already getting. He gave him fish and told him that from this day forward, I don't care how many fish you got in your boat, you are no longer a fisher, but you are a fisher of men. And from that day, Peter was changed. His story no longer was the same. What am I saying? When it came to a point like this, Peter and John were not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are a lot of people today, and I'm finished, y'all. A lot of people today that are ashamed. And they may not say it this way, but they'll show it in their actions. They are ashamed of the gospel. They're afraid to spread the gospel. And the reason as to why is because they don't have conviction. They have a lack of conviction. I pray and I repent every day, not because of the fact that I have to, but because I want to be in right standings with God. I'm not perfect. That means that when I extend my reach to somebody, I'm coming down to your level to let you understand I know how this feels. How many of you are willing to bend? The Bible says that they carried him 
and they dropped him off at the gate, meaning that he had to be sitting like this. And Peter and John had to reach over and pull him up. How many of us are willing to go beyond, bend our backs for somebody that may not have? To tell them Jesus loves them. To tell them that there is a savior and they can be redeemed by the blood of the lamb. By the power of their testimony. Some of us already got back problems. So we use that as an excuse. What I'm, let me, <laughs> what I'm saying is some of us, we use what bothers us already. We use our limp. We use our back aching as a, okay, God, I don't know about today. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like it today. Or I, don't, I can't do it. But there's somebody whose life depends on it. There's somebody that really needs God. But you'll never see it because you're too worried about what hurts you and what bothers you. Your salvation doesn't belong to you. When you came and got saved and said yes to the Lord, that was your commitment to Christ. Christ never had to make a commitment to us because he already knew his assignment. It's a little too deep. God already chose and handpicked every single one of us that's in this room. We had already been engrafted, already redeemed. There are some of those that have an assignment on their life that are out there. That's sitting at a gate called beautiful. That's sitting at a temple waiting for somebody to reach them. Peter and John stopped what they were doing. Didn't give room for excuse and took time to reach a man that had an ailment, but also struggled in his faith. <laughs> the Bible continues, if you read the rest of it, I'll, if, you, if you take time to read the rest of it, Peter addresses the people, and he gives them a harsh rebuke. He says, what y'all standing around here in amazement for? It's nothing of what we could do. This is only God. See, there's a lot of us uh, in the church that we, we're doing, we're laying hands on the sick and they're recovering, the miracles, signs and wonders are happening, we're prophesying and a lot of people are I, 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 I did this, I prophesied I did it, I, yeah and never, never acknowledged God Peter learned the process of what it is to be uh, uh, to be humble. He had a sense of humility. That's why he was able to win people to Christ. Do signs, miracles, and wonders. He wasn't afraid of the gospel. He knew how Jesus changed his life. So he was willing to do the same because the power was invested in him to do so. Peter says, y'all all standing around here starstruck because a miracle happened. Y'all looking at us as if we did it, and we didn't. It was the power of God. Mm. The book of Zechariah, the people were struggling, <laughs> trying to make ends meet, trying to figure out how in the world we're going to get out of this. Lord spoke, it's not by power, it's nor by might. It's nothing of what you can do in your own strength, but it's by his spirit. It's by the Spirit of God. Woo, hallelujah. Let us stand. I'm, I'm done. I'm finished. Father, we want to stand as a representation of who you are. Allow us not to extend our reach with a lack of faith. But when we extend our, our reach, extend our hand to someone that needs us, that needs you, that needs prosperity, that needs deliverance. Lord God, give us the faith for them 
so that when they stand up, they'll be greater than ever in theirs. I pray, Father, that you give us the spirit of humility and give us confidence to win souls like never before. Give us the ability to be strong in what we know, what we believe. Father, I thank you. I glorify you. And I honor you. Mm. Woo. I just want you to just declare something. Say, Lord, make me an example. Woo. Lord, make me an example. Mm -hmm. Some of you, some of you just, just allow God to make you that example. I would put a, a forewarning to say, be careful what you ask for. But because we serve the living God, there's nothing 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 that will come to you that God uh, would would he, it would be nothing that God would allow to come to you that would be bad nothing that would be to your demise anything that you're going to do for God it's going to be done well father we thank you Lord uh, Lord I even pray father for those that are on the airways those that are on Facebook and on YouTube and uh, uh, wherever else in the airways, wherever this, this live may be shared, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would strengthen those. We extend our reach even through the airways to those that do not have a savior. We extend our reach to those that, do, that don't know that they are redeemed. We extend our reach to those that have been condemned, been church hurt, been bothered, been tampered with. I pray in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that you would go deep down into their soul and begin to prick their hearts in the name of Jesus. Father, we love you today. We love you. We thank you, Lord God, that you'll withhold nothing from us. And Father, I break the hand of every enemy and every devil that'll try to come up while we're trying to extend our reach. He's trying to twist our hand. I come up against every devil that try to break us, that try to cause us to be emotional instead of spiritual. I break that that back of religiosity that comes and tells us that we can't go and extend our faith and our reach to someone that deserves the spirit of God. Lord, be our shield and buckler. Be our hedge of protection.